Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you today? Great to see everyone out here today. Awesome day today in Ohio. Had snow on the car today. Signs of what's to come. So, yeah, that's right. And uh, hey, let's welcome Powell right now with us. Powell Campus, great to have you joining us live right here. It's just awesome to worship together, and thank you for uh, joining us here. We're all joining together and having a great time. We're online campus as well, so get your Bibles out, your pencil and paper. No one uses pencils probably anymore, but get them out anyway. Pencils, paper, iPads, iPhones, whatever. Take notes. You need to remember what you learn in church. You have to apply it during the week. It's life and death. Hey, I want to recognize any veterans that are here. If you would stand up for me right now. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. We are so thankful for you and we want to honor you as citizens of this great nation. We want to honor you for your stand and uh, we want to thank you. We have a gift for you on the way out, so make sure you stop at the kiosk and uh, we have something that we want you to take home with you. Now, this week was also historical in another sense, Powerball jackpot. $2.04 $2.04 billion to one person. Now, I have to talk about that today, obviously. So, I know you talked about it this week, probably. So, we'll talk about it. You remember three or four years ago, it was up to $1.6 billion. Yeah, you remember. You're afraid to say you do, but you remember. <laughs> well, come, you know, some, how many have heard this? Well, someone's got to win it. Okay, you ever heard that before? So some of us got together, we were here at the the staff, few of us, that I did not endorse this as the president of this corporation or the pastor of this church, but a few of us at staff got together and said, someone's got to win it, we might as well put a few dollars in there, so we did. (laughs) And uh, that night I had a dream, and in the dream I was corrected by the Holy Spirit. The Lord said this. In fact, this is why I asked Amy to sing that song tonight. He said, all today, all my promises are yours, he said. He said, you already have access to that. I said, what? He said, oh, yeah, it's in Philippians. My God shall supply all your need. He said, if you needed $2 billion, I would provide it. You already have that. You don't have to play the lottery to do that. I said, oh, yeah, I get it, okay. You already have that potential. You already have that potential. You know what? $2 billion, $10 billion, $300 billion is not going to make you any happier. I remember we were uh, in our farmhouse back in the old 1856 farmhouse with the dirt cellars, raccoons, and rats in the cellar, and, you know, a lot of problems. But you know what? We were happy. We were launching Faith Life Church. We were so happy. We didn't care about the house. We just loved being with people and ministering and just, you know. And uh, we were building our house in Mount Vernon, and it was a, it's, a, it's a great house. But the night we moved out of the farmhouse, I was outside loading the van. The Lord spoke to me and said, Gary, you'll never be happier than you are right now. You could have everything in the world. It's not going to change your happiness. You know, I have a philosophy that if you can't be happy with little, you'll not be happy with much. And so the Lord was reminding me, you know, things are great, houses are great, you know, tools are needed in life, but they do not anchor your happiness. If I needed $2 billion, I have access to it. I have access to it. First Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 1.20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are, yes. In Christ, and so through him, the amen, which means what? So be it, is spoken by you and me to the glory of God. Every promise is yes, no begging required, no dialogue convincing God of your need required. You already have every single promise with a yes. Yes. Every promise. So I want to dig into that a little bit. I'm going to go through a scripture that I've taught out of many times, but the Lord said, I want you to review this, not in the sense of just teaching it, but I want you, all of us, to ask ourselves, am I doing this? 
you know, it's nice to come to church and uh, people say, that was a great message, Pastor Gary, but listen, are you doing it? Or is this spiritual entertainment? I don't know. You have to answer the question. Because the word of God gives life to those that apply it. Second Peter, I love this scripture because I, I just love it. It's so great. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power. How many would agree God has power? Yes, he made everything seen and unseen. Has given us what? What does your text say? What does your text say? What does your mouth say? Everything in my dictionary means what? Everything. God's power is already, is that past tense or is it just my Bible says has, like past tense? Does your Bible say has given, past tense? That's past tense, friend. God has already given you all things, everything that pertains to what? What does it say? To life. Already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Godliness means righteousness or meaning how God designed life to be lived in heaven. Meaning what's in heaven should be here. I mean, how God designed life to be lived. He's already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, you have the ability to live above, as we'll find out in the scripture, the corruption in the world. So he has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our what? Say it out loud with me. Knowledge. There is the problem, friend. Knowledge. You, what you've learned about God is not true, probably. That God does bad things. That he hurts people. He's untrustworthy. I mean, you cannot rise higher than your perception of who God is. Because you'll never receive any word he says until you receive his character as faultless. Right? Okay. Our knowledge of him. So we've got to get our knowledge squared away. So his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge. So if you want everything that has been given to you, you need to understand through knowledge what it is, how to get it. By him who has called us by his own glory and goodness, his glory is who he is, what he's done. And you'd have to say he is beyond thought. He is beyond comprehension. He is, his glory supersedes anything you can even imagine. Would you agree? All right. And you already agreed he has the power and goodness. And this is where people stumble. This is where the enemy attacks in our insurance policies. An act of God is killing people, destroying things, right? All the enemy can do is try to distract people with false understanding of God's character. The foundation of anyone's word is based on their character. So through these, through these attributes of who God is, his glory, his power, his majesty, and his goodness towards you, through these, verse 4, he has given us, or you, his very great and precious promises. These are precious and personal. These are his promises to you. So that through these promises, you may participate in the divine nature, his goodness, and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. When did evil desires start in the earth? Help me out. Back with Adam and Eve, right? Evil desires. God, I mean, Satan told Eve, did God really say? Basically, God is holding out on you, Eve, you're lacking something. Now, an evil desire is a desire being fulfilled in an illegal manner. So why would there be a temptation to lust? Because there was nothing left, and the earth curse system came into play that what they had, they lost, right? Now, by the sweat of their brow, they have to make their way through life. How many agree in the garden they had everything? Everything they needed was there. So the world became corrupt. It lost the blessing of God. It fell into lack, poverty, disease. It, it didn't take on the character of heaven. It became cursed, the Bible says. Not because God cursed it, Adam did. Adam rebelled and basically kicked God out. 
So corruption came on the earth, but God said there is a way to escape that corruption. You know what? Everyone wants to escape that corruption. That's why people are trying to win the lottery. They're tired of trying to find provision. They're trying to get outside that corruption, right? Corruption. How can I live above the corruption? Okay, let's define our terms. What is the answer for the corruption in the world that came through Adam? It's in the same text. Who can tell me what it is? Look at your text. It's in the first sentence. What is it? What is it? God gave you what? Has given you what? Has given you everything. When you have everything, you're not tempted for anything. Am I right? If you have everything, what is there to be tempted by? <laughs> the earth became cursed. It didn't have everything. But through Jesus Christ, everything has been restored back to you through his promises, his very great and precious promises has been restored to us. So what is the escape? Everything. Let me ask you a question. You go to a buffet, right? Do you lust after the table, or the food on the table next to you? That guy got too much food on his plate. Does that even cross your mind? Oh, I got to eat. They may run out of food. You, are you even nervous about running out of food at a buffet? Do you hoard food at a buffet? But you hoard money. Why do we hoard money? Because we're fearful of running out. We have no fear of running out at a buffet. Am I right? Because you know that whenever you run out on your plate, you can go get more as you want many endless times. Listen, understand me today. That is exactly how heaven works. That is how the kingdom operates. It never runs out. If you need more, there's more. You need more, there's more. You need more, there's more. You have to learn that because you've learned the corrupt system of living, of hoarding and holding on and trying to survive. You have to learn it's, it's a buffet. Every promise is you. Can I have 20th seconds? Yes. Can I have inlet? Yes. It's all, yeah, every promise. All 7,000 promises in the Bible are already, they're already yes. You have no need to even ask God, can I? Yes. If you have my word on it. If you have a promise, yes. That eliminates fear completely. If you actually believe what we're reading today, you'll walk out of here completely free of fear. I have my confidence in God's buffet. He's not running out. He said yes. He provides everything that I have need of, he said in Philippians. According to his glory. Amen. Amen. So we already have the promises, but we need to talk about this. Let's talk about the goodness. Let's get this squared away first off. James chapter 1 verse 16 says, don't be deceived. My dear brothers and sisters, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, and does not change like shifting shadows. If it's yes yesterday, it's yes today, and it's yes tomorrow. He doesn't change. It doesn't change. Don't be deceived. He doesn't change. It's yes. Very great and precious promises. Now, looking at our scripture again, his divine power has given you, you can put your name in there. In fact, look at your neighbor's Bible. It should be underlined. Because I've taught this before and they should have already underlined it. If they haven't, just borrow their Bible and underline it for them. He's already given you everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, his glory and goodness, his character, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate. You may, it's an option play, you may participate in the divine nature, his goodness, and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Now, what does it mean to participate? All right, so he's given us these promises that you may participate in. That's an option. But how do you participate? If everything's dependent on that, how do I participate, Pastor Gary? Let me illustrate it this way. It's your birthday. I give you a present, right? And what do you do? How do you participate with my, 
my heart towards you? How do you participate with my gift? How do you do it? What do you do? You take it and say thank you. You take it. You take it, own it, and say thank you, correct? You participate. You participate with God's goodness. You take these promises as yours, and you receive them as yours because he cannot lie, and you thank him because of his glory and goodness towards you that he has expressed through Jesus Christ and setting you in his kingdom and giving you every promise. You receive it. On my finger is the most precious promise I have ever heard in my life. My wedding band. I did not put it on my finger. Drenda did. And it is on my finger because it is reminding me of her promise, her words, when she put it on my finger. This is sacred, it is holy, and it is sacred to me, and it means a lot to me. That's why I wear a ring. Why? To remember it. To remember her words. Do you know God's promises? Do you write them down? Do you read them? Are they precious to you? If they were precious and you believed they were absolutely true, I believe you would have those things scribbled all over all kinds of things to remember them. When you look out across the earth corrupted system, you will be reminded of God's promise and you will sneer at what the world says is your future. You'll go, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. uh-uh participate with him. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace. That means God's power and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. When did God say that? He didn't have any kids. He didn't have any kids. God gave him a promise of an Isaac. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Now, they could not have kids, but they did. So how did Isaac get here? They were too old. They could not have kids. So how did Isaac get here? You have to have an answer. If you can't answer the question, then you don't know the process of how Isaac came, and you don't know the process of how your promise will come. How did Isaac get here? We're going to find out in a minute. We're going to answer that question. Dig into that. But let's talk about God calling things that are not as though they are. And I need a volunteer for this one. I'm going to have to pick someone. I do that sometimes. This young lady right here with the glasses right here. I don't know who you are, but yeah, would you mind standing and coming up front? I'll just, not to embarrass you, but I have a check for $100. Will you take it? It won't bother you to take it. Okay. Now, some of you know what I'm going to do here. But, okay, I have $100. I'm giving you a check. My name is on it. Do you believe I'm good for $100? You probably don't know me enough to know my character well enough, but these people will vouch for me. (laughs) Yeah, so you got the $100. But really, you don't have the $100, do you? You have a check, which is a promise. You have to go cash it. But look what I'm going to say here. I'm going to ca- can I cash it for you? I'm just going to cash it for you right now so you can walk out of here and actually buy lunch because banks aren't open on Sunday. Okay, great. Now, well, just thank you for participating. You can have a seat. Thank you for participating. But here's the point I want to make. She could have taken that check and put it in her purse and held it for three years. Let me say it a different way. You go to work, you get a paycheck, right? And it could be in your wallet five years, 10 years. But in my mind, the employer, here's how I would say, I paid you already. I'm calling things that are not as if they are. See, I have already given you my promise and my check. It's just a promise, right? A check is a promissory note, correct? I've given you my promise. I have already paid you. If you don't participate and cash it, that's on you. That's exactly how this works. Most people carry the promises of God in their Bible. They open once a week at church. Because they don't esteem them as precious and trustworthy. 
If you actually believed this, that every promise was yes and amen, <laughs> yes, it changed your life. But pastor, I know lots of people, they can even quote the promises of God. Great. But they're not participating. They're not participating. They're not taking it. They're not receiving it and calling it theirs. They're not cashing the check. They're not participating with the promise. And the promise is always past tense. Once you have the check, it's already done. She hasn't cashed it. Well, she did. <laughs> but once you have the promise, and I don't lie, I have the glory or I have the means to cover that check, and I've given you, expressed my will towards you, my goodness towards you, it's done. It's done. In my mind, it's done. Now you have to participate. All right, let's talk about how to bring the promise into our life. We have a promise, okay, in the natural, we cash the check, we have the cash. How does it happen in the spiritual realm, of course? So let's go back to Isaac. How did Isaac show up? Impossible for Sarah to have a baby. How did he show up? Galatians chapter 4. We'll take a look at that. Because everything you receive from heaven will show up the same way. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. I spent some time in this earlier this year in a series, but we're going to just bounce off of it again here. Verse 21, tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman, that's Hagar, right? And the other by the free woman, that's Sarah. His son by the slave woman was born in what kind of way? The ordinary way. But his son... By the free woman is born as a result of a promise. Now, this is talking, uh, this is from Isaiah. He's prof prophetically speaking of the church being born again, uh, obviously, with no labor attached. And this is about this, the whole church age, it's prophecy. But Isaac was born from a promise. So, how was Isaac conceived in Sarah's womb? We just said. What was it? A promise. The life is in the seed. Men, you might remember in January, I did uh, the men's meeting, and I said, don't look at the dirt, keep your eye on the seed. Jesus teaches the parable of the sower, right? The word of God is the seed sown into the heart of men and women. Staring at the dirt, it doesn't change. The life is in the seed. Well, pastor, I don't have, it can't, it's impossible. I may never have Stop it. Keep your eye on the seed. The seed will produce. You follow me? See, your past makes no, it means nothing. See, you've become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Your whole, your whole future has literally changed. Your potential has literally changed. You've become a son and daughter of, of God himself. And you operate with his anointing and his wisdom and you carry the word with you. I mean, everything changed in your life. Now, if you still live like you did under the earth curse system, nothing's going to change. But when you begin to believe the promises, you're going to talk different, act different, expect different. The seed, the promise has the power to produce what it has been sown to produce. If God says you're going to prosper, stop looking at your past and trying to examine how it's going to happen. You can't explain how a seed germinates. <coughs> Excuse me, I hate to do that in the mic there. Where is it at? The mic's over here. Okay, don't, don't cough that direction. Sorry. <clears throat> Coughs, I coughed the wrong direction. I coughed towards the mic. It's right here. <clears throat> anyway, the seed is where the life comes from. Every promise carries a picture. When you take God's promise and you meditate on it in your spirit, the Bible says the seed all by itself, the word all by itself begins to sprout, the blade, the stalk, the head, the mature head, the seed in the head. All by itself, <clears throat> it begins to grow. But the life is in the seed, not the dirt. So it doesn't matter who you are, you just need to be good dirt. You just need to be a good incubator. You just need to go, I receive that. I accept that because God said it. It's his promise, and he will bring it to pass. See, Abraham was fully persuaded that 
he had the power, that God had the power to do what he said. I don't know how it's going to happen. I have no clue how Sarah can have a baby, but she did. I don't have any inkling of how God's going to do it for you what his promise says. That's not your concern. He'll make it known to you, but the seed will produce. you got to hold on to the seed. Okay, you with that? So some steps. Number one, <clears throat> conception. That's why I asked you, what are you doing with the promises? Where are they written at? Can you show me where you've been studying them? If I sent you a packet in the mail that you won the $2.04 billion lottery, on the front cover it said winner of the lottery, would you open it? Of course you would. You'd read every single detail of how to cash that check. <laughs> but the word says God has promised you his, his, very, his very personal promises. Are you going to handle it like that? Wait a minute, what does this, it really says that? I can live debt free? It says that. I don't know how to do that, but it says God, it says right here. See, if you can understand that the promise is yours to you, wow, you want to honor that. Like a wedding band, I can't, I can't forget that. I got to remember that. Lots, lots of stuff coming at me. I'm not alone. I got to remember what God said about this. This is all, this is good. He's, he's going to help me, okay? So conception is number one on your list you're taking, right? Yes, I see heads. Okay, you got to remember this. Now, when, you, con, when the conception occurs, we have no evidence in the natural of anything changing yet. You got to remember that. There's no change yet. We really still have no clue how it can even happen yet. But we do have the sign check. Second phase is gestation. In the womb, you can't see it. You can't see a baby growing in the womb, but it is growing cell by cell, very detailed. God's plan is forming. And so what happens, you keep that inside and meditate on it. Out of your spirit, all of a sudden, some ideas begin to pop up. Call this guy, this idea, or a dream in the night or whatever, you began to get some direction, some ideas began to form. Nothing's changed yet, but things are kind of stirring, a little bit here, a little bit there, right? Things are moving ahead. Can't see it yet. It's in the womb. Then we move on to preparing for active labor. Now the baby, you can feel it kicking. It's been kicking for a while. The vision, the promise, now you've adopted it as your vision. It's no longer a promise on paper. Now it's taken form on the inside of you. It's a business idea. It's a direction. It's a whatever. You began to accept it and receive it as your vision. You now have passion. It begins to move you. Changing your daily routine, it begins to change how you live. You begin to research how to initiate this and prepare for the birth of this vision and questions and questions, legal, you know, due diligence, all these things. This vision now becomes your passion. Number four, the very act of giving birth. You want to make sure timing's in place, nine months for a human. You don't want to jump ahead. You don't want a preemie. You want to wait till everything's in place, every fingernail, every hair, everything's perfect, right? And how many people do you know that have launched out, they had a great idea, they're excited about it, but they jumped out without due diligence and found a big mess and fainted? Mm -hmm. Timing's important. The Holy Spirit's your guide in this part of the, of the, of the journey. He'll show you when, how, where, and he'll, he'll move in your life. You know, Drenda and I, we had Amy in Tulsa, our first baby, and we were in an apartment, and we just couldn't stand it. We can't have Amy in an apartment. We just got to have, she need, you know, we got to have more kids, got to have land, you know, we've we got to find a house. And we did, and we didn't have any money. We borrowed all the down payment. My boss wrote a letter to the bank stating what he, hmm, how can I say this, thought I would make that year. Had never made that much before, but he, thought I could make that. I was in sales. We didn't have the first house payment. That was very stressful. Great idea, but wrong timing. God delivered us out of that. That's good. So number five, so giving birth, timing is important. 
Number five, understand when you do give birth, it'll be a miniature vision. When you buy seeds at the hardware store, God always shows you the mature, luscious fruit on the package. That's how God always speaks. That's how he always speaks. He always shows you the end. He always leads you by the end, not the shriveled seed. He always shows you the end, okay? And that's, how you, that's what you hold on to. That's the vision. That's what you're moving towards. But you're going to give birth to a little vision. It is a big vision, but you have to, you're going to give birth to one little plant, okay? You know, you're going to give birth to a small one. You've got visions for a big hamburger chain. It's going to start with one hamburger, right? So you're not to be discouraged because you know that you are moving with God and it will grow. So you'll, you will launch a smaller version of what he showed you. Some people go out, God spoke to me that I'm going to have this, and they go out and lease all these properties and these buildings and buy all this equipment, and they crash and burn because their overhead's way too high because they're moving on what the finish looks like instead of allowing themselves to grow with it. You have to raise the vision because not only is the vision going to change, well, the vision stays the same, but you have to change. Your capacity to handle that vision has to increase with the vision. Number six is maturity. Obviously, it's going to grow, but you're the one that decides how fast and how, how, how big it's going to get. Deuteronomy 7, 22, the Israel, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Now, they had the promise, right? They had the promise. This is the land, right? He's going to drive them out little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. What he's saying is you won't have the capacity to occupy what you're capturing, and it's going to fail. So he's going to let you move little by little into your vision for your own protection, to make sure that you can handle it, and his name won't be drugged through the mud with your name when it crashes. Right? Right? Yeah. Understand this. <clears throat> Because the vision or promise that God has given you is actually impossible for you, because God always gives you a vision bigger than you. Is that right? Always. <laughs> always. Unless you remember the promise, his promise, and it can only be born or come to pass by the power of the Spirit, you will faint. Let me say it again. If you step out and you fail to remember that it is his promise requiring the power of his spirit to bring it to pass, and you think you're going to step into it in your own strength, you are a fool. It will fail. One of the enemy's greatest tricks is to get you to believe that. Look how great I am. Look at this thing. It's an awesome idea. Look at this great business I'm doing. And you just say, I don't need, I don't need to hear God anymore, right? Mm. Remember what he said. Remember the promise and remember that it's his, you can't do it without his strength, his power. So here's, here's, the, here's the message of the whole day, okay? What are you doing with the promises? If the promises are your escape, from the corruption in the world and our, your future is tied to the promises, what are you doing with them? Can you name them? Where are they written at? Do you know how to find them? Are they precious enough to you that you have read them? You, you are saying, that's mine. That's mine. Isn't that awesome? That's mine. Or are the promises of God tucked away in the Bible that you open once a week in church? because you don't esteem them as precious or possible, just religious. Well, I know this church receives the promises. We have lots of stories here of people receiving the promises, like the one I'm about to show you right now. Pastor Gary did a series, The Power of Rest, a few years ago. I didn't even know this church back then, and so I went ahead and I just listened to it you know, in, in the whole series. Just kept having it play over and over and, and over. And so it was just so new and just so, you know, it's just so different. And it just made so much more sense. Um, and so that really launched my faith. We, we visited Powell 
And so I really enjoyed it. We were going to a church that she was acquainted to, and she was kind of fighting it. We didn't really talk too much about it, but the Lord told me, he's like, you need to let Brian choose where you guys go to church. And I was like, mm, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I was completely disobedient um, for, it was at least three months. And then one day we're on our way to um, our other church, and he's like, hey, can we go to Faith Life? And I was like, sure. <laughs> and uh, I said, the Lord told me to let you to choose um, where to go to church. He goes, we're going to Faith Life. <laughs> like, okay. So we went, and I just, I saw the joy and the excitement in him. So we've been yeah. here. Absolutely exactly. love it. Like, it's family. Plugged in a lot of the small groups, and, um, you know, listening to Pastor Gary's, you know, teaching on the kingdom, just really resonated finally. And so I was able to, you know, dream a little bit. He's like, hey, babe, let's go to dinner tonight and write down what we're believing the Lord for. And I literally was, I froze. I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And then that's when, you know, we went to dinner and um, we wrote down Habakkuk 2-2 and wrote down everything we were believing for. The Lord spoke to me one day. He's like, all right, you know, write down what you guys want. Because um, we I was living in a house that I had purchased before we got married. Um, and it was my comfort zone. We prayed specifically for our house to be hidden from others and revealed yes. to us. Yes. And so one day she was just, uh, she opened up her Facebook on, uh, and she saw a uh, Granville selling wall. And it says, she goes, hey, I need to look at this house. It might be our home. I saw this house. And I mean, my first words without even thinking were, this just may be our house. And I was at my parents' house and I sent him the, the picture and he texts back. He's like, wow, where's Fredericktown? I said, I have no idea. I said, but it's got a lot of the things that we, you know, wrote down and are praying and believing for. We obviously went, we looked at it and uh, there was a few other offers, um, but it was a for sale by owner. And so they thought that they were gonna, the, the sellers, they thought that they would put it on Zillow and just get, you know, a few more offers potentially. I started like, oh my goodness, like with this market, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely crazy. And, but I just stopped myself. I'm like, but you know what? We're children of the most high king. God's already got it figured out. So I said, I had to stop my mind from going to what the enemy wanted me to speak. And I had to speak truth, even if I didn't believe it. I asked her, I said, what do you feel like, you know, is a fair price that, that we should offer? And she said a number and it was uh, less than the list. 18,000 less than the and list. And so we talked about it and I was like, yeah, that's, that's but it would be ideal. Um, I but. said, I just keep getting this number in my spirit. We put our offer in and they asked if we would put it in um, the following week just because they wouldn't have more show -ins. And so I knew, I already knew in my spirit, like we sowed our seed, we were in agreement. Like I knew as soon as I stepped foot in the house, I knew it was ours, I just knew it. And so we were like, you know what? We're standing on this price and our realtors got back to them because they said, well, they want you to pay the difference. And we were just like, we don't have it. We're believing this is our house. Like we're in agreement. And they came back and they were like, okay. We found out, you know, later that week that we got the, the contract, we, we got the house. And so it's just kind of awesome how it all just happened. And, you know, she casually was looking for two years, you know, looking for a home in this market. And then it's just hilarious that we write down, you know, our vision. And then it just came, you know, it came within three weeks. I really believe that the enemy tried to get us off our faith numerous times. But you know what? Like when I wasn't strong, he was strong. And when he wasn't strong, I was strong. And so we were, yeah, you know, really. we were really um, just encouraging each other and just reminding each other that the Lord is in this. Like we sowed our seed, like this is ours. And we just gotta, we just gotta stand. And yeah. that's what we just kept doing. It's in the country, it's acreage, it's, it's everything that we wanted, so. God knows our hearts before we put our requests out. He's waiting on us to request. You know, it says, ask and you shall receive. And we knew what we wanted, but we, we didn't ask for quite some time. And so when we, when we put our requests out there, the Lord is like, let's go. All right, great. Okay, so looking for two years, and then they decided to participate as Brian spent time in the Word, listening to the Word, faith was growing to believe the promise, and they initiated that. Now, she mentioned the enemy was messing with her, and she said she spoke truth. And the enemy tempting you not to believe, she said, I spoke truth. Okay, so never reveal yourself to the enemy. Okay, so you speak truth, 
he's going to try to press buttons to get you to speak doubt and unbelief. But you stand strong and you only speak what God says. Right? That's a key. But uh, it's amazing. Now, you receive everything from God in the same process we're talking about. Anything and everything. It has to go through that process of saying yes and receiving it and then walking it out. And so they did. It's a great story, especially in that market, to get a house to them receiving that under, under that price. That was a great story. They looked for three weeks. I mean, they looked for two years, looking for two years. And then they got serious, actually sat down and wrote their picture out, wrote their vision out, and in three weeks they had it. Pretty cool. You say, I wish that happened for me. Well, you have the same yes they have. They just chose to participate with it. You need to do that. All right. Well, stand with me today. Again, today's lesson is, what are you doing with the promises? They're all yes. We say the amen to the promises. We cash the check. And so many people are just carrying the promises in their pocket without actually participating with the Father's intent towards them. So I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to bow your heads with me today. You know, life can be busy and it can have issues that must be dealt with. We understand that. But the Bible is very clear. You do not have to beg God for something he's already given you. You already have the yes. You already have the answer. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is your counselor. He's going to lead you, help you. But it all begins with you saying yes to God and receiving his gift of life. Not the religious picture you had in the past maybe of God being mad at you or do's and don'ts. You know, all that stuff, is, that's not God. He's trying to get you to take the gift. You know, don't stick it in your pocket. He's trying to get you to say yes and receive his gift of life in Jesus Christ. And that's easy. You can do that. So today as we're here and we're at PAL, we're online, we're all going to pray out loud, but if you would say today, Pastor, I need that. You know, I, I need to know how life's supposed to work. I'm trying to figure this thing out, and I just can't get it done. That's right. You'll never get it done until you know the one that created it. And God is so good. Every promise is yes, if you receive him. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of Jesus, and you could do that. That's not difficult. You mean it from your heart. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus has the legal right to become a son and daughter of the house, God's family, and a citizen of his great kingdom. And that, my friend, is where things change. Life changes. So we're going to pray all of us out loud. And if you would say today, Pastor Gary, I would like to be part of this prayer. I'd like you to stick your hand up and say, you know what? Monday's coming. I need a new perspective on life. I want to say yes. I need to discover and learn more about the God you're talking about. It's different than one I learned about when I was growing up. I need to find the good goodness in God, the, the, the true God. I see hands up, hands up. You say, Pastor, that's me. I want to start my, br- thank you. I see hands up, hands up, hands up. Yes, ma'am. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Yeah. See, I know God knows your heart. He hears you at night. He hears you in the, in the night thinking about this issue and that issue. And that's why you're here. He got you here to hear this is the solution. This is your life. This is it. I don't know how you got here. Maybe a friend brought you. Maybe you drove by and saw the campus building. I don't know. Or, pal, I don't know how you got there. I don't know how you happened to flip through the channels and got us live. I don't know. But God is in it, and he wants you to know he loves you. He is for you, and he has the good life for you. All the promises, they're yes. They're for you. Anyone else would say, hey, pastor, I want to be part of this prayer. I want to start my life. New perspective. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep, I see hands all over. I'm sure they're at Powell and online as well. So let's pray together right now. Let's say, Father, you said in your Bible that if I call on the name of Jesus, that you'll receive me. Make me brand new on the inside. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to live life the kingdom way. And I say yes. So today, record my name in heaven. That on this Sunday, I said, yes, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior.
from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Give yourself a hand. Amen. Amen. That's awesome news. On the screen, you're going to find a free download that will help you get started in understanding the kingdom. So get that. It's going to help you. You can have a seat. And we're going to prepare for our giving today. Pastor Trenda is joining me. Whoops. I get that. Now, money's important, as you know. So we got to learn to do money God's way. That's, that's basically it. A lot of promises in the Bible about money. <clears throat> will you say yes to them? Given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Running over. We all like to talk about the running over part, but see, it's all part of the process back here. Am I going to believe what God says? Give, and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men, shall men, women give into your life? What does that mean? Business, favor, wisdom, all kind of things. But with the same measure you give, it shall be given back to you. It always comes down to believing what God says, doesn't it? Amen. And it can apply to money as well. So as you prepare that, the envelopes will go in the back on the way out. Online, you'll see there how to do that. And then Pastor Drenna, you always have great comments. It, takes, great it always words. takes so many notes. Great words. I mean, notes and well, notes. That's actually a word God gave me. Okay, there's a like notes. <laughs> in it. She, it. She's heard this a million times. She takes notes every day because the Holy Spirit illuminates something new every time, yes. right? and that's what he does with the word. That's why we need the yeah. word, right? We should have everything in writing. Don't let anybody change God's promise. I was thinking when you gave her the check, Yeah. you know, we used to have everything paper, right? You have paper books, you read it. It's not going to change, right? It's there the same every time you look at it. You have paper money, you know, you have a, a paper money or you have a, a check that's written or paper ballots. Those things are not changed. This digital situation, people can change things, right? And so we need to uh, stick with the written word of God, amen? There are people that are printing Bibles, they're leaving out Romans 1. They're leaving out scriptures that they don't want because it uh, speaks into cultural Things that people say, well, we don't want Romans 1 in there. That's not for today's culture, you know. Well, God's Word, the Bible says if you take, uh, you take anything away from this book, mm. it's damnation. So we just need to remember that, right? We need to remember that as we preach the Word of God. So um, anyway, I feel, I feel like to even actually just speak this. Because when you're in the process, just like we were talking about the giants and the land last, last week and the 12 spies spied out the land, Ten came back with an evil report. Two came back and said, we believe what God says. Yeah. And you and I have to choose that report, right? I don't want to yeah. be the person that perishes and could have gone into the promise. Yeah, they could have gone good. into the promise land, but the ten spies that had an evil report, guess what? They perished with the people they led down the wrong path. But the two spies that came back with God's report, they went into the promise. And so you and I, let us choose to be those people. Amen. Amen. Here's yes. the word the Lord gave me. I didn't know for here or when, but it says, you need faith with patience. Do not cast off your confidence, for I have called you to stand between me and the enemies of the people and fight in my spirit. Contend for those who do not know or understand what you see. Stand. I'm not finished. I've only begun. I will make known truth as you stand. I will make known the lies and truth will break forth in an hour you may not think. For had they not marched around the city seven times, the, uh, the walls of Jericho would not have fallen. I am bringing down through shaking and then building up new foundations in my people that they no longer be moved, but stand strong and inherit all I have promised, all that is theirs. Stand and see my word come to pass. Believe and receive, calling those things that are not as though they are. For in me, I already see the finished work and it is done. You only need to stand and see the deliverance of the Lord. Amen. That's good. Good word. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's great. You know, As you yeah. teach, that word just came up. And That's it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Stand with us today. We're going to give, and we're going to believe what God says. Hallelujah. Huh. So take that in your hand here. If you went to the bank to cash the check, and the check is good, the money's there, and the bank won't cash the check, who's the bad guy? Right? The bank. Yeah. So we tend to blame God instead of blaming the enemy 
the promise is already ours. It's already given to us. It's ours. So if something's going wrong, don't blame God. Blame the enemy and go attack where you should attack. Don't blame the, you know, the God that gave you the word. Or change the banks. Change banks. <laughs> <laughs> now that will preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Lay Hallelujah. your hand on that giving. Say, Father, you, Father, what a privilege today. What a privilege today. To sow into your kingdom. To sow into your to kingdom. To receive from your kingdom. To receive from your kingdom. We honor you. We honor we you. We thank you. We thank you. It is a great privilege. It is a great privilege. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Hallelujah. Great day. Great day. Hallelujah. We send you today Hallelujah. out with the promises of God. And I want you to Hallelujah. hold on to them. And our prayer team's up front, by the way, if you would like to have prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, and we dismiss this. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this wonderful people, God, that believe yes. you. They choose to believe your word. Thank you. They walk in your blessing, God. They are a light wherever Amen. they go. Yes. That yes. you are giving them strength to stand in the battle, Father, until they see all of your enemies, Father, brought down. They are strong in the Lord and the power of your might, Father. They stand. They walk. They work. They do what you say. They obey, Father. Thank you because of that. Your blessings on their life because they love you, Father. They walk in your covenant. They walk in your healing anointing. Father, thank you that you sent your word to heal them and deliver them from all sickness and disease. They believe that. They receive that. We speak to every spirit of infirmity and we say you bow to the name of Jesus Christ. He sent his word and healed them and they are healed. So go in Jesus name. Healing flows and sickness goes. Thank you yes. Father. They walk in your provision and yes. your blessing. Your anointing is on them to prosper that your covenant would be established in the earth. Thank you. They continue to prosper that no weapon formed against them can come against them their prosperity. Instead, Lord, the enemy goes from their stuff and they have, they have the blessing. Whatever they do, it continues to increase and they go from glory to glory to glory. They only have need to stand. Now, thank you, Father. They will and they will persevere with your word through faith and patience and they will inherit every single thing you said belongs to them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. See you next Hallelujah. week. Hallelujah.